Hi, it's Tabitha Temple here. So I have a confession. I thought this whole time that I was live and I was not. I was having a whole conversation with you. And so now I'm here. So I'm glad you actually did not hear that entire conversation I had with myself. But I was actually sharing a story. I have this blanket that my sister actually crocheted for me when I went out to undergrad. So I was telling this whole story. But now, lucky for you, we're about to start. So you don't have to hear the whole story again. So I see Abigail is on, Ariana, Coach Michael, Abigail. Abigail, I want you to join me live. So if you can send a request. Hi, everyone. Hi, wind down and chill. So I'm just trying to figure out, Abigail, I think you need to send me a request to go live. And so while you're trying to figure that out, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, Coach Michael. Many of you were a part of our live broadcast this week. And so you heard from our wise coaches, Coach Poonam, Coach Michael, and po Coach Laura Lynn. So I'm here, Coach Tabitha. Somebody has a question. I don't know how to do live. Let me see. How do you go live? That's a very good question. I'm wondering if I could actually click on your name and that would make you go live. Let me see. No, that's not what I, I'm supposed to do. Okay, so if anybody can tell me how to um, make Abigail go live, I would really appreciate this. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Thank you for your patience. I'm not trying to share a photo. Type of photo, okay. Thank you. If she has joined the live, you can click on her name. Okay, Abigail, I'm gonna click on your name and let's hope that works. So once the name scroll up again, I'll look for her and see. But while we're waiting, thank you everyone for joining. It's Friday. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about my special guest. One of these minutes she'll be able to join us and you will just be so excited that she was able to join because you get to hear from one of your fellow students. So I'm just waiting for Abigail's name to, okay, so let's see, I'm clicking on your, there we go. Now go live with, finally. It took me forever. Hey, y'all. <laughs> what, what is wrong with me, Abigail? I don't know. We're both bad at technology somehow. So, like, this is how it just is with us usually, I feel like. <laughs> Abigail, I'm so happy to see you. It's nice to see you, too. So, Abigail is joining us. Abigail, tell us the college, the university that you're repping tonight. Um, I go to the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Oh, George Washington. So we have a very um, bright, promising student on the line. <laughs> Abigail, I know you've joined us for a few of our Instagram live sessions. Is that correct? I have, indeed. And so what, just give us your honest opinion. What do you think about the sessions? Um, I think they're good for like a little up boost, like for 15 minutes at the end of the day. Um, I work and go to school, so like I usually have to do a lot of schoolwork at night. So having a little booster, like a little check in, like how you're doing and hearing from other people, um, whether it's to like motivate myself or to be like empathetic and understand that it is a struggle right now and everyone's going through it. It's a really great experience. So you're comparing us to, you know how when you go to the health food store and everybody's like, I want a little shot of grass. You know how they grind a little grass? <laughs> For an interview, are you calling us a shot of grass? Um, I would call you guys like a ginger shot instead, because I'm more into those. So, but yeah, well, that's a good analogy. We are twins. I love ginger. <laughs> I, I, and Coach P loves ginger too. And not only does Coach P love ginger, she said her sister and brother in law went to GW. So, okay, we have um, everyone's repping. Yes, that's right. So, Abigail. I think today may have been a little challenging for you. What did you do today? So today I took a paper 
Um, I'm working towards my MPH right now at GW. And I think it's very difficult right now. Um, it's always difficult balancing school and work, unfortunately. But especially now, it's really difficult to find motivation. So I'm not necessarily using my time, my free time on the weekends as effectively. So luckily I have flexibility with my work so that I can try to work on papers. But I also was not exactly very efficient today either, mm -hmm. um, which is just a constant craving of free time and some normalcy, um, mostly because like my coping mechanism is I'm very extroverted. So going to see people, and that's not really an option right now. So I end up binging a lot of TV instead, which takes up too much time. But <laughs> we're getting it together, and I'll be done on Monday, which will be great. Abigail, I'm so excited that you'll be done for the semester on Monday. We have someone saying, uh, Aaron is starting his MPH in September. We don't know who Aaron is, but we're sure he's fabulous <laughs> uh, at GW, so that, that's great. So Abigail, you mentioned like your normal motivator is going to connect with people. They're gone. You use, you know, TV as kind of a filler and outlet. So how are you really staying motivated? Because I know Netflix can't be motivating you. So what's keeping you going? <laughs> I don't think Netflix or seeing people is necessarily my motivator. Well, maybe it is to a certain extent. Like I like to keep a pretty active social life. So I'm usually motivated to get my work done so that I can go have the fun that I want to do. But now that we're staying inside, I'm not as motivated because I don't have these solid plans that are going to be happening and having that FOMO kind of to like instigate me to go do my work more of. Um, but I started running, trying to keep like wellness that way, trying to keep those endorphins up, which is really like a great opportunity, I think, so I can be more active. Um, but I'm mostly just really excited for a break and to do some nice leisurely reading instead of doing some research reading, which will be great. Um, I think those are my main motivators right now. That sounds really good. Leisurely reading sounds great. Oh, and by the way, Abigail, Aaron mm -hmm. joins our session sometimes. That's right, Aaron. That Aaron. Thank you so much, Wine Down and Chill, for letting me know. Because at first I was like, Aaron who? Because I actually know an Aaron. And I, he's, you know, a little older. So, <laughs> was Aaron. so yes, Aaron, I remember Aaron. Thank you for letting me know. So, Abigail, what was it like this last semester? You started off actually going into class. You ended the semester in your house. So what was that like for you? Hi, Nikki, by the way. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was like a really weird experience um, just being in my apartment so much. My roommates, um, there's four of us in the two bedroom, so it's pretty cramped Ooh, sometimes. Like four? Four in two bedrooms? Yeah, there's four of us in two <laughs> bedroom. Yeah, you gotta be really close and like enjoy each other's company kind of situation. Like Exactly. But they can be really taxing on the Wi-Fi at times, so you can have connectivity issues. Plus, everyone's using the Wi-Fi, it seems like, currently, so it always feels like it's dropping, which isn't the best. But it also really hinders, like, interacting with your professors and different students. Um, I think that it would be really difficult if I was graduating looking for a job currently, because you're not able to have as much of that career fair interaction or um, networking with your own students. Um, which was all very difficult, especially because I do a lot of group projects and group papers. So doing that all through Zoom and trying to figure out how to work it out with everyone, I think was a lot more difficult. And also staying focused in class. Mm -hmm. When you're on mm -hmm. Zoom, you have your camera on and you're able to like scroll through everything on your computer and you know, like, <laughs> should I be reading BuzzFeed articles right now or paying attention to class? Uh -huh. which is a big internal struggle at times. Um, but yeah, that definitely had like a new effect on me. Plus a lot of my professors had to change their syllabus as well. Oh, wow. And you know what? Actually, Abigail, um, Aaron, who is an aspiring MPA student, he's on. So Ooh. hi, Aaron. We were actually just talking about you. Thank you for joining your um, MPA sister, Abigail. <laughs> now, Abigail, did you just complete your first semester or your second semester? Um, it's a little bit tricky. So I did the BS MPH program at my school. So I started taking master's level classes about um, two years ago, I guess now, because I was uh, a junior in undergrad. So I completed my first year of being a part-time only grad student, which was great. Um, so a little bit different, but it was great. 
knew right away what you wanted to do. Did, what what advice would you give our students if they're still struggling? They're like, uh, I don't really know exactly what I want to do. I, you know, I have people around me. They're very focused. Like they know they want to do medical school. They know they want to be a teacher, but I really don't know. Any advice to help folks kind of direct what they want to do? Yeah. So I'm kind of a, an odd case, I think. Um, my parents love 60 Minutes. It was on in our house every day, every Sunday. And that's how I found out about public health. Um, I saw the most amazing like news stories about these vans driving through Appalachia and giving primary care services and these nurse practitioners applying for grants and providing services. And I thought that was the most amazing thing ever. So just having your eyes open and looking at whatever sparks joy for you, whatever you're passionate about, and then trying to figure out how to get that in a career path and talking to a ton of people. There, you'll never know who you meet and what they do and what connections they have and who they could be, how they could help you. And I think that a lot of people do want to assist others. So reaching out to people and really leveraging your network, I think is a great way to try to narrow down your focus once you find your passion. Wow. Abigail, while you were dropping on us, pearls and wisdom. I have so many pearls today. I can make me a necklace. And <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. So we have Pooja joining us and a, a, some other people. But I love that. Find your passion. You know, people are like, well, I love so-and-so, but I can't do so and so but I can't study that in school. Well, I don't know. Based on what Abigail said, you know, talk to people. Find out. Like I said before, I love helping people. I thought I wanted to go into medicine, but that was not... You know, you know, I, I can't do that. So I'm a social worker. I'm a coach. And so I, I follow my career path. That's what makes me happy. Abigail figured out what her passion is. I love that advice. You're so wise. <laughs> I need some more time to get wiser. <laughs> hey, but you're not, you're not doing too, too bad. <laughs> So Abigail, we I know you are probably exhausted from a day of writing papers, so I don't want to hold you too long, but this is your moment. This is your time. So if you could think of one piece of advice that you would give our college students, what would it be? Hmm. Everybody, oh, while you're thinking, everybody's giving you compliments. They're saying, on your way. Everybody is Team Abigail tonight. We need us some um, little shirts that say Team <laughs> And then in the back of mine could be Coach Tabby Cat. Team Abigail, Coach Tabby Cat. Yeah. I, think... <laughs> I think my advice to anyone who's currently a college student is finding your passion and your coping mechanisms. Um, your passion is going to what really drives you and motivates you and help you along the way, but also developing really strong, healthy coping mechanisms and knowing how to utilize them and when to, I think is super important because life is just going to get more stressful. So you have your motivator and your ability to handle those stressors, then you're unstoppable. You're like on your path. You're going to get it. You're going to do it all. If you have both of those things. You know what? That's fine. We're about to switch places. You're about to be. <laughs> you are about to, because I know, but I'm serious. You just spoke right to me. It's not just about your motivators. It's about your coping mechanisms. And you are right there. You're right. Because stuff is not going to always be easy. COVID-19, all these bumps. And we talk about their potholes. So what are your ways to cope with the adversity when it, Abigail? <laughs> I feel like I want to bottle you up and just carry you around with me. That's that's the information I need in my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course. So Abigail, everybody on the line, we just hope to give you the strength and energy to get through this last uh, leg of the race and finish up uh, the semester uh, early net last next week. We also want to send our positive thoughts to all of our students on the line. You got this. You know, you can do this. You made it this far. Uh, keep going. Don't stop now. Everybody have a good weekend. We'll be returned here on Monday. We're going to give you Saturday and Sunday off, you know. Get yourself together. Relax. Get your work done. And we'll see you Monday. If you're not already, follow us on Instagram, steerus.i. Thank you.
you so much, Abigail. I'm not going to call you student. I'm going to call you coach. You're going to be our junior coach. Junior coach Abigail, will you accept this mission? Uh, of course. I'll do anything for you, Tabitha. You know that. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye, everyone.